Okay, everyone. We still have a few people in the waiting room, but we're going to go ahead and kick things off today for Sarah's session about making an all-volunteer board work. Uh, my name is Paul, and I am Sarah's co-host today, so my job is to kind of keep things moving and then also to um, forward on any questions to Sarah. So if you don't see the Zoom chat, um, you might want to open that up. If you ever have questions for Sarah about her presentation or about any points that she makes, um, feel free to send those uh, through the chat. And then what I will do is uh, I will forward those to Sarah and I'll bring those up for you. So no need to unmute yourself today. Um, you're welcome to keep your video on, keep your video off, whatever makes you feel comfortable today. I know Sarah would, would love to see your faces so she can connect with you all. Um, on this beautiful Wednesday. So again, my role is to kind of moderate the chat. So if you have a question for Sarah, um, please send that in the chat. You can send it privately to me or you can just send it out to the group and then I will make sure that those get to Sarah and she can answer those questions for you. Uh, she has an awesome presentation. Um, so before Sarah starts, I would like to introduce her. Um, Sarah has been the executive director for the Batesville Area Arts Council uh, in Batesville, Indiana for five years. Prior to this position, she served as a volunteer for their Young Artist Showcase program, which I'm sure she'll get into uh, in a little bit. Sarah has also been an educator for 30 years and currently serves as an instructional coach at the middle school level. Um, and I myself serve on the BAAC board with Sarah and it has been a pleasure getting to know her. And I know you all are really going to appreciate this presentation. So Sarah, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, when Paul told me that he was going to be my co-host, that made me extremely excited, <laughs> as you may, um, as he said, because he's part of our board and we've been good friends and actually co-educators for quite some time. So hello, everyone. I'm really happy to have you all here today. And we appreciate not only that you are at the um, Indiana Arts Council homecoming, but that you also decided to come to this session. And as Paul said earlier, um, I know that sometimes the session might be that might last for about 45 minutes and then we might open it up for questions, but because you may have questions as we go along, again, we may stop after a couple of slides and answer those questions. So feel free to do it as you go along or we'll capture them at the end. All right. Um, so I'm, I'm figuring that there's many reasons why you decided to sign up for this session. Um, my guess would either be that you're part of an arts council or that you're part of a board on an arts council. And also maybe you are rural <laughs> and possibly volunteer, like you, you possibly have a volunteer board. So we qualify for all of that. We are um, a in Batesville, Indiana. For those of you who don't know where that is, it's a small town right in between Indianapolis and Cincinnati off of I-74. And we have a population of about 6,000 plus people. And for being such a small town, we're extremely lucky because we have a huge company in our town, Hill and Brand Industries. And because of that, we partner with them quite often and we have a lot of people who choose to work in Batesville. But with that being said, we're all st again still very small and because of that we have a council that has all volunteers on it minus me. I am the executive director as Paul said and I have been for five years but I am part-time. Um, I get paid as a part-time executive director. Now, when I was interviewing for my job, the past director said to me, Sarah, I just need you to understand that when you um, are the executive director of an all voluntary board, it's much different than if you're involved in a board where they get paid. Because what's gonna happen is your board members, even though they all have very good intentions, if it's voluntary and they all have separate jobs, they're gonna be like, um, 
I can't come or I can't do this or that type of thing. And would you, how are you going to handle all that? And I said, well, I've been in education at that time for 25 years. So I'm quite used to all of that. <laughs> so um, that has served me well, for sure. So um, as you can see, um, I'm just going to kind of, I have a PowerPoint and I'm not going to necessarily read from it. It's just going to be helpful for us to have it as, a, as an outline. And that's how we're going to discuss it from here. It's also um, uploaded as an in file, so you can always have it um, even after this presentation. So we'll go ahead and get started um, with just the facts. So we have an 18 to 20 member all volunteer board and you might say, why does the number change? And the number changes a little bit because um, as you're gonna see in a minute here, we have very um, specific members roles. So we have positions on our board. Um, sometimes I liken a board to, to being a group of people, however many you have and people sometimes say, oh my gosh, why do you have so many people on your board? Isn't that hard to make decisions? Isn't that hard to have discussions? Isn't that too many people's voices to be heard? But when we do, when we do it the way we do it, it's not because we have very specific roles on our board. And because of that, um, it's like having probably a small board within our big board. Um, but the numbers change because sometimes people share and we have co-chairs. And this year, we do not have an auction chair like we've had in the past because of COVID, we're not having an in-person auction, which is our one um, fund, big, huge fundraiser. And because it's our one big, huge yearly fundraiser, we have a person who serves on the, of the, on the board usually as a chair for that. Um, our Batesville Area Arts Council has been an organization for over 30 years. So we have um, quite a long run and continue to have quite a long run. And it's a fixture, I would say, in our community because we make it a point, one, to collaborate with many other organizations and businesses in our community, and two, we are entrenched in all of our schools. So um, we're pretty well known because of that. Like most boards, our president and our vice president only serve one term. And we almost always, unless something major happens, the vice president comes on the board knowing that they will be the president the next year. So usually when you have to ask for a vice president, it's a little bit harder than getting a other board member because you know that they're committing to being the vice president and then being the president. Um, it does not mean after you're president that you automatically go off the board. You can be a different position if you would like to stay on our board. You just cannot be president. And all the other board positions, as is written here, um, again, serve at least a year. And our year goes from August to August because, as I said before, we're very entrenched in the schools and we started first as an arts and education board before we got involved as a community arts council. So we kind of go with the school calendar. However, you do not have to give up your position after one year. As a matter of fact, um, Paul's been in his position for a lot more than one year. <laughs> and we've had some people, I, I don't even know, like in terms of my secretary, I have been here five years and she was there when I came. So, um, I think that if you love it and you have a passion for what you're doing and you become an expert at it, it's a lot easier to stay on the board. And coming from a person who took over the executive position, a director position after someone who had had it for 10 years, it was huge to me to have people who had already been in their roles continue to stay. Like that's how I got through that first year so easy. Okay. Um, I'm just going to list some of our board of directors positions. Um, as you can see down at the bottom, I was saying, you know, these, these are what serve us in our community. Obviously, you may, if you're ever interested in working your board kind of the same way that we are, um, you may obviously have less positions and you may have more positions if you're in a bigger city 
or you obviously might have different positions. You obviously have to do what's best for your community and really what type of art council you are um, and what your mission and what your purposes are. I told you that a huge part of our art council is dealing with the schools and getting artists into our schools. And by artists, I just don't necessarily mean artists in terms of pa uh, painting and artists. We have, we bring in um, authors, we bring in illustrators, we bring in dancers, we bring in musicians, we bring in choreographers. We try to bring in as many people as we can into our schools. Um, one, because we are rural and we want to have diversity in our schools and two, we have kids who obviously are not going to make it to much bigger cities, so we bring them to our schools. So when you look at our board of directors and positions, you might say, what in the world is um, like a young artist showcase chair? <laughs> you might, like, what is that position? Um, the reason why we obviously have that is because we have a young artist program in our schools where our kids can be judged in like six different genres, all the way from film to playing an instrument to um, creating a sculpture to taking a photograph. So um, they sign up uh, from middle school to high school if they want to be in this young artist showcase. And this chair on our board is the person who runs it. And they are obviously in charge of getting all of the kids signed up. They're in charge of getting judges for each of those genres and they're in charge of putting out the publicity for that program. And then they're in charge of coming to the board with any kind of issue that they have and or just telling us what happened with Young Art Showcase that year. So I am not gonna go through all of these positions um, and what they entail unless you want to ask that as a specific question. And then of course I will. Um, and or at the end, when I give you my contact, you can also just email me or text me or whenever, whatever you'd like to do. Um, let, let me say that um, different positions obviously <laughs> are, I, I wouldn't necessarily say harder because everybody, it depends on what your passion is and how you are at your position, it may be hard for one person to be a social media chair compared to an auction chair. But different positions definitely take more time and maybe more expertise within their knowledge base. Like for example, to be the treasurer for our board is extremely time consuming. I am constantly thanking our treasurer because <laughs> it's a voluntary position and our treasurer has a full-time job in the business world and then does this on the side. So um, you really just have to be an advocate for the arts to, in order to be on the position um, and, and in order to be on some of these positions in our board. Okay, um, let's go, we, we may come back to this, um, but let's go to the next slide because it's gonna get further into how this is set up and how we do it and why we do it. Okay, so <clears throat> again, this, this organization's been here a lot longer than I have been on the board. But I, so, so I have to be honest and transparent in saying that I do not know why the board decided to set it up this way in the first place. I'm just grateful that whoever had that foresight did it um, because when I say, why is this board so effective? Because everyone has a purpose, it runs so much more smoothly. Um, and everyone in their position becomes an expert. So when they have to come to the meeting and present on what they're involved in, everybody else in the board listens to them. It's not necessarily that they don't ask questions or that they don't need some clarification, but they're not gonna ask anybody else on the board. They're gonna ask that chair because that chair is the person who put all their time into that role and they're the expert in that role. And 
we purposely find people that I don't necessarily have to keep what I say, like a thumb on them and make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. But we all work together for one purpose. So even though we have all these different roles and you think, wow, there's a lot of them, we all know that the true purpose is to make the Arts Council effective in our community and in our school. And we all take a lot of pride in our Art Council. And because we do that, um, becoming an expert at your, at your role is, you know, you, you want to, you take pride in that. Um, now, how do we find new members? I also put, I also uploaded in the file, just some samples of papers that we have in our handbooks. And we have what is called the nominating committee. And I put that one on there because this was something that we were gonna get to, how do we find new members? And if you've opened it, fine. If you haven't, no problem. You can open it later and I will tell you about it. But um, at the beginning of every year, uh, we have handbooks for new board members. If you're already on the board, then you just keep your handbook and I update particular papers for whatever that year needs to be updated, like for our events or for all of the board members information or for when our meetings are gonna be. Those things change yearly, so they just switch out their papers and the handbooks, but their jobs and their purpose basically stay the same. Um, so when we go to find new board members, we have what is called a nominating committee. And the nominating committee um, is chaired by the vice president. Um, but Again, it's a committee. So the vice president asks other board members to be on that nominating committee with them. So each year the vice president can ask wh whomever they want to. Of course, I'm always on it. I'm, I'm just kind of like the general contractor. I'm everywhere. <laughs> Paul's probably like, yep, she's everywhere. Um, but we get a nominating committee and we sit down and because the members have had to tell me by April or May, of that year, remember I told you our calendar goes August to August, because those members have had to tell me, uh, Sarah, I'm gonna go off the board this year um, in August. I know the seat we have to fill. So when we come to this committee, I say, okay, this year we have to find like a new auction chair or we always are gonna be looking for a new vice president because it's one year term. Um, so we sit down and there, and it will be interesting, I think, for you to read this when you have time, um, because we have little notes in here as to what we're looking for. And it's, and it's kind of funny when I, when, I, when I sit down and I read it, because it's almost like, um, you know, if any of you have been like in a sorority fraternity, you're looking for certain people. <laughs> I was like, don't go there. That's not what we're talking about. We do not... Um, we welcome everybody. And in fact, we want to be a board with diverse members on purpose. But so when I say, let's look for young people, that doesn't mean that I don't like older people on my board. What it means is, is that we want to have a board that does have older people, younger people, women and men. We want to have people who are in education, people who aren't in education. We want to have people of various backgrounds, ethnicities, religion, whatever, it doesn't matter. We want to have that because when you go to try to have events in your community, you want different members of your community to be, to be represented and you want to, you want to make sure that they are being a voice for the, for the bigger community at large. But it does say things like, okay, these positions are a little bit harder. So let's start with these positions first. And it also says, and it's kind of a good practice, we're looking for people that you would just automatically think you're looking for on, on any board, which is you're looking for people who are leaders. You're looking for people who I do not have to constantly say, hey, <laughs> you're supposed to be doing this, this, and this. It says in your handbook, you're supposed to be doing, why aren't you doing this? You, so you want to have people who are very self-driven and you're looking for people obviously with a passion for art. Um, and so 
that's easy. And sometimes we just generate a pool of people like that. And then when we, when we talk to the people, then we say, oh, okay, so what is your, you're good with numbers? Would you want to be a treasurer? Oh, you're great with young people? Great. Maybe you should be something that has to do with our schools on our program. Um, so I have a person who is great at cooking, so she wanted to be in hospitality. So you kind of bring your strengths in with the board position. We also have some board positions that don't take as much time as others. One of them is hospitality. So sometimes we just, when people are like, I don't know, I love the arts. I would like to get involved, but I don't have a lot of time. We put them in positions that don't take a lot of time to see if they like it. And then sometimes they get, the, because they've been on a couple of years, then they get the harder positions on purpose later. So um, I went and recruited Paul. So I can, I can tell you the story because he's here and he can say whether he, I'm telling the truth or not. But um, <laughs> Paul is um, just an awesome young person. And I, my, my children were lucky enough to have him as a teacher and he's an English teacher. So I initially recruited him to be in our social media. And I knew that he would be great because he's young and young people are great at technology usually. But he also, because of his English background, it was never going to be a problem for me as to what he wrote in terms of captions or um, at that time he helped in publicity, he helped with my newsletter. That's how I really got him at the beginning was to be my newsletter person because he knew how to do all that. But newsletter is hard and it's very time consuming. And he did that for me for a lot of years and was wonderful at it. And so then, because he became more interested in after he's been on our board, he's like, I would really like to be in social media. And I was like, great. So he switched over his position on the board to be in social media. So this is an example of where someone might start because I think of what their skills are. And then after they've been there for a while, sometimes they stay on the board, but they might change positions. Luckily for us, he stayed. Um, and found a different position, but he's such an asset. I was like, yay, sure. Then we'll go find somebody for newsletter. Okay, so that's how we do it. And as with everything you might find in your life, asking personally is huge. You can say, and we do on our newsletters, hey, if you would like to, if you're interested in becoming part of the BAAC council, send us an email, shoot us an email. Sometimes I get people who reach out that way. But for the majority of, of finding true members to be on our board, we go and ask personally. Um, because as you all know, it feels good to be asked personally. That means somebody thought that you would be great and an asset. So it's a lot easier to, to want to be on something like that when you're asked personally. And so as a result of this type of a board, I don't have to switch positions nearly as often as I would think maybe if it was a different um, way on a board. Um, I've had people who've been on this board, as I said before, well over five years, well. And because of that, we're an active board because it's voluntary. I think that, and I'm again, I'm gonna use Paul because my co-host, I don't think he has to know every single solitary thing. He doesn't have to know about um, how to write the minutes. He just gets the minutes because he's not secretary. He doesn't have to know about the Young Artist Showcase. He listens and he hears the report and he has a say in it, um, but he doesn't have to organize it. And sometimes when you are a board um, general, you have to have a voice in everything. <laughs> Whereas when you are an expert at one thing, then um, you get really good at it. And then sometimes you don't have to necessarily spend as much time and you can stay on it. So we have years of sustainability and we have an active board. And again, we have just people who take pride. They, they get really good at what they do and they take pride in that. And then because they take pride in it, they, they can tweak it each year and make it better. And that's awesome. Okay. I have a question, so I'm gonna stop here because we're at the end of a slide. And um, 
I was asked, did the board hire you? And if not, who did? Yes, the board did hire me. And this was um, a little interesting um, side note. They were a little bit nervous to hire me because I did have a full-time job as a teacher and the, the director before me did not have a full-time job. Um, so what we did was when I was hired, I was hired for a year. And after the end of that year, um, the board could decide whether they thought it went okay. And they even said, I could decide whether it went okay. And actually that was very, um, that was helpful to me because I was thinking I could do it. But again, you don't know until you actually do do it. And so I knew that if it was too much after a year, there was not going to be any bad feelings and it was going to be okay. And now I'm starting my sixth year. So I guess it's gone okay on both sides. <laughs> Good question. Thanks. Um, and if I, I'm evaluated every year. Um, so that might be something else that you want to know. I'm evaluated every year. So the, the board could say, it's not working out and we need to find a new um, person. And because I am not technically a member of the board, I'm just the executive director, during our board meetings, I can't vote. So when we do have things that we vote on as a board, I, I'm not considered a member. Um, so it would be easy then, obviously, to get rid of me because I can't sway people's votes. <laughs> or vote for myself. And so if the board ever decided that we needed to part ways, they can do that. So every year we make the decision, do I stay on another year or not? Um, but if I do leave, the board will also vote for the new person. Okay. Okay, and I'm, you're also wondering how it works when you recruit new people and you manage the people on the board, like you're describing, is there a conflict? Um, uh, I, I w could you be a little bit more specific? Conflict meaning in what way? Because meaning meaning the people who are already on the board and then I recruit a new person, is there conflict when the new person comes on? Anyway, we'll get to that. I'm happy to answer it, okay. Um, also, another great question, and so if you want to talk to me about the um, conflict, I'll get back to that. Other question, do you utilize committees in addition to various positions? Definitely. Definitely we do. Um, so there are specific committees that meet, every, like this nominating committee. Um, we have a budget committee. We have a nominating committee. We have an auction committee. Um, so we, we have committees that are almost, what should I say, they, they are already developed. So when I recruited my treasurer, I said, here's your handbook for your position, but you also will head the budget committee. So they know when they come on, if they're on a particular committee, they also know that. However, there are some times that things come up um, and we might form like a, a small committee just for that event. It doesn't mean that that's going to be always. And if that's the case, then we might say, hey, uh, we have a new event that's coming up, which I don't know if um, any of, uh, like for example, we were in partnership to get the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra to Batesville, which was a huge, huge undertaking. And they came and performed their Star Spangled event, a banner event for two years in a row. That um, obviously required more committees, but we would just say, who wants to be on that committee? It's not because, um, you know, Paul, you're on social media, so you have to be on that committee because that's going to take a lot of publicity. We just asked for that. The ones that are already in place, budget committee, nominating committee, strategic planning event committee, when you get your position, you know if you're on that committee or not. I hope that, I hope that helped answer that question. Okay, um, what type of project management tools 
does the Batesville Area Arts Council use? Hmm. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to also uh, ask um, in terms of product management. I'm not, I'm not really sure if you're meaning products as in what I'm thinking of when I'm thinking product or if you're just asking for management skills. Um, so again, be a little bit more specific and I will answer that. Um, you describe managing the people who are in charge with deciding if you get fired or not. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, that confuses me and seems like conflict. Okay, I didn't mean to ever imply, I'm sorry, I'm going back and then I'll go back to this other question. I didn't mean to imply that there was conflict. I'm just, um, so I apologize for that. There are definite times that just like any board, you might disagree on something that's brought up. Um, but, but that's just discussion and we vote. So uh, we don't necessarily, we have our protocol just like any board does. And you can bring up something, even if it, even if somebody came to the board and said, I'm having an issue, I'm just gonna say me because I can. I'm having an issue with Sarah being executive director because of this, 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 and this. Um, then obviously there would be a discussion and there would be a discussion as to, do we table this and find out more information and then we bring it back again in the discussion. If it's something much more small than that, like for example, if we collaborate and we have somebody that says, um, we would like you to collaborate and give us some money for um, an event that we're having, like a ballet studio might do that. What we do is we bring that up at the board meeting. We have a discussion about it. People say their pros and cons. We discuss on it. We vote on it. And I've, in all my five years, I've never really had anything where beyond that there's been animosity people are like i said my piece as a board we voted on it either it went or it didn't and i think if somebody had tons of animosity about something they probably would go off the board after a year but i don't i don't see that again we're very good about going back to our mission and sometimes if we get asked something or we go in a general direction, one of the board members will say, does that fall into our mission? And that really helps us because sometimes, of course, you want to help everybody and you're just like, it really doesn't fall into our mission. And so we need to say, we can't do that. We can't help with that event. We can't collaborate in that event because that does not necessarily fall into our, our mission. I'd say our biggest problem usually is how much money we should um, give to to help other people. And that's you. And, and usually, again, we discuss it. We set on a thing. We vote. Okay. Um, good guys. Questions. Awesome. Um, hang on a second. How many committees or positions do the board members serve on and how do you manage the workload to make sure the members get don't get overworked, specifically those who are excited to do the work at the beginning of their terms? Okay, good question. Um, I would say that you are rarely, minus vice president and president, they are in treasurer. They're on other committees. Again, maybe one or two and they only meet like once or twice a year. Like for example, we set the budget. So we have a budget meeting and a budget committee to set the budget before the new year. We meet once or twice, that's it. So if you're on the budget committee, you're not being overworked because you know when that's happening. And, and listen, I gotta tell you, I'm on all these committees. <laughs> I'm like every committee, I'm on it. And I don't even feel overwhelmed by them. So I know that the particular positions don't feel overwhelmed by them. Um, I, 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 I think that if somebody is overwhelmed by their position, I'm hoping that they feel that they can come to me and tell me that they do. Because 
we definitely, again, want to take pride, but we also want to keep them. It's much more important for us to work through something if they feel that. We did get to a point where we had some very active um, programming vice presidents and there were a couple of years that we had a lot of events and we started feeling that because again we're an active board but we're a voluntary board and at the end of that year we we actually said this is too much we can't keep this up we are a voluntary board it's great that we have that many events if we could um, if we didn't have other jobs <laughs> but we don't and um, um, and so we so we we talked about it as a board we just said do we really need this many events i don't think we do and people are getting stressed out and burnt out and so let's bring it down and that's how we discuss it and that's how we talk so people are pretty open about that okay so i don't think that that i don't think the committees meet we meet as a board once every month by the way um Okay, um, to clarify what management tools does BAC use to keep tabs on the progress that committees are on? Okay, do they use a service like Slack to keep track of progress or is it more of a manual process like multiple meetings? Yes, we are definitely much more of a manual process. The only thing that we do in terms of bringing in somebody else is when we have our auction, we do bring, we do get a service to help us. And that was only a couple of years because that's when I said, I can't do it anymore. Um, it's too much. But other than that, we do it pretty much manually ourselves. Um, um, do I feel like I have to manage the committees or are you able to be silent or a less engaged member? Okay, so that's a great question. Um, I got to tell you that 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 is decided year to year. It, it really depends on what kind of acting president I have. I have presidents that are very, and, and I've had five. Um, this is my sixth. I've had presidents who are very involved very on it, very organized, and I can be pretty silent. Um, not that we don't, not that we don't work together, but sometimes we just talk outside, right, or text outside. And then I have, I have presidents that are much more laid back, and it's not that they're trying to shirk their duties; they're just laid back, and they're a lot more hands off. And then I, and because I feel that they only have one year as a position where I've been on five years, I feel like that is my job to kind of help them. And I might have to get them going a little bit. But um, um, again, because we have such a good nominating process, I don't really run into a lot of problems with our members. And I do, I do liken that back to having a very good nominating process. If you don't have that, then you're going to run into a lot of issues that we don't necessarily run into because of that. Okay, um, but we do have challenges. So let's go, wait, did I just do this? Sorry, guys. Um, let's talk about some of the challenges that we do face because um, I do not want you to think it's all easy. Um, we are a small town. And so if you're on a small town, you'll know that the same people do everything. <laughs> I mean, we have multiple people on our board who are also on other boards or other organizations, and we all have other jobs. Um, we all other have we all have full time jobs, and so time and availability are lacking, just as if like the rest of you who are asking me these questions. Um, and yet, we get along, and I. And I'm going to bring it back to why again, because I really try to reflect on this before I had this um, this this presentation. I really reflected on this. Why why does it seem that why does it seem to work so smoothly? And I and my takeaways are this: because people have very specific duties, it is easy for them to do them. They become, they, they, and, and I'm just going to kind of share a lot of you seeing this. 
when they get their handbooks, it helps them. They're like, I had a person this year, my new vice president, I asked her to be on. She said, could you send me my list of duties before I make a decision? I said, sure. So I handed her the hand, I sent this digitally handbook and she said, her first comment was like, wow. But I've been, I've served on a lot of organizations before and never was it detailed like this. So this really helps me know whether one, I want to do it and two, if I can do it. I mean, we definitely have had people who've said no because they look at it and just say, I can't right now, but ask me later. Um, so luckily she said yes. And I think one of the reasons why she said yes was because it was easy for her to see that we're very organized. So we're organized. We, we, tell them exactly what their jobs are. And here is another huge thing. In the transition, if you're new, I give the other people, like my new vice president, I give her the information for the person who was on it before her. And the board members going off know that the new board members are gonna be contacting them. So we have a very good transition method where they meet, and they can ask questions and the old board member person helps them get acquainted. And because our executive director has stayed the same even before me, we can help them with that transition. We have it all written down as to what they're supposed to be doing. And they have people who've been on the board, even if it's not in their position, they've had people who've been on the board who know just the general makings of the board for multiple years so they can ask them as well. But I do liken it back to, very organized, very much an expert, only have to become an expert in one specific category besides being a part of it. And I just think that because we're a board that is very excited and proud of what we bring to our community, our schools, we just work through it because we're, we're happy. <laughs> we're happy people. <laughs> okay, um, let's go on here. So <clears throat> whenever, whenever I go to a conference as an educator, um, some t what, what makes me decide whether I really like that conference or not, it, because of course, when you leave, you have to write plans and it's a, it's a whole mess to get out of your work day. And if you go and you come home with nothing, then you're kind of like, wow, was that really worth it? What I like to do is I like to have some takeaways when I'm done. So I'm hoping that I'm giving you some takeaways. If I'm not, then please contact me because I am, I am more than happy to talk with you or email you or text you individually. But here are some things that you can do immediately, whether you decide that you like the way that this board is run or not. The first thing that you need to do, if you think that um, you're great, or even if you think that you can improve, is you need to evaluate your board. Um, any system that is gonna work well reflects on their system and they reflect and evaluate it every year. Um, I know as an executive director, I do this every single solitary year. What can, what can I do to better the BAC? And I write myself notes and goals. And if I think that there are particular areas and positions, then I contact that person. I say, let's meet, let's talk about this together. Um, but I definitely am like, okay, this is working. This is good. I don't necessarily have to put a whole lot of time in this area this year, but this is not necessarily working that great. So this is an area that is going to be one of my goals. Also, you know, you kind of make a wish list. You may not get to everything in that year, but you kind of make a wish list and you kind of rank them <laughs> as to what you want to see done. And then um, you, that's how you proceed. So every year we reflect, every year we evaluate. Then what you do after that is if you think that specific roles might work well for you and your board, you then obviously generate the roles that you're going to need. And again, you may not, or you might say, hey, this might be a little bit um, of something that we could use, but maybe we, we don't go extreme like you. Maybe we're just going to start with a few roles this year. And besides your normal president and vice president, maybe we're just going to start a few roles this year and see how that works. If that's the case,
then you decide what the most important roles are that you need for your community. And then what I would suggest right after that is you write down the, the, the duties, right? What that role entails. And because every single solitary time somebody comes to join our board, they want to see the duties. <laughs> and why wouldn't you? Why would you say yes if you, if you didn't look, check your duties? And when they asked me, they, I have a handbook too of all my duties. And what was so lovely for me was it was done chronologically. So it was like, okay, in January and February, you're going to be doing this. And in March and April, you're going to be doing this. Now that switches from year to year in terms of our event, but not the main things, you know, not like our membership drive or not our annual meeting or not getting ready for the fundraiser. So that was so helpful. And if they're not necessarily in chronological order, they are in numbered order. So I would do that. And then I would fill out a job description besides the duties of the role. I would just, I would also do a job description. And then you have these in these handbooks. Then the other things that I do in the handbooks are, so everybody's handbook is different just because their job description is different and their roles are different. But then everybody's handbook is the same in terms of here's all the board information. Here's our, our events for the year. Here's, here's what you do if you have to make an in-kind um, request because we need in-kind requests for our grants. And every time you get an in-kind donation, make sure you fill this out. If you need to um, have something on a website or a graphic arts something, here's a form you fill out. So everybody has, it's very organized. It's very much um, so that people aren't constantly asking each other questions. And that, so that's, that's why you would create a handbook. So those are, those are the huge things. Okay, so that is pretty much our overview of our board. And I'm hoping that that helps you. If you have any questions, now's the time. And if you think of something again later on, you have my contact on that PowerPoint. And I'm always talking to people. <laughs> As you can tell, I like to talk. <laughs> and I'd be happy to do that. Um, I have a question here that says, what is one way that the BAC has handled COVID? Oh, that's a good question because um, just like the rest of you, it has really affected us. So the first thing we did was we went to online meetings. So now we have Zoom meetings every month. And at the beginning, we just obviously, again, we're canceling events and or postponing events because um, of all of the guidelines um, for safety. But at the same time, we were definitely aware that we wanted our artists to feel some love and support from us as an arts council. So we decided what can we do um, to still pay some artists and still also bring some of art to the community. So Paul and I worked on having some of our local musicians give concerts and so they gave a concert and Paul set it up through his Facebook um, that you could watch the concert online. And we just reached out to some of our artists and said, we would pay you if you would do this for an hour or two. And it was lovely because, you know, people could write on the, on the Facebook comments and we had so many people tune in. It was so nice. Then we did our community art show digitally. So we had, um, people who take pictures or sculpt or paint. And even though it wasn't as great as if it could be um, in person, we posted all of their paintings and or pictures, sculptures online. We had a gallery, people voted online. We gave out the money to the winners. We actually had more people vote online than we've ever had in person, ever. So we really publicized it, sent out email blasts, like, hey, you can give the People's Choice Award. We had true judges to do the, 
the money in each genre. But we did give out a prize for People's Choice Award too. And we even set it up that you could only vote once. So um, it wasn't like an artist was just constantly voting for themselves. You had to, it would only recognize one email. Um, so it, we're, we're still trying to find ways. We just had an arts and education meeting because we were like, how are we gonna get all these artists into the schools? Right now, no volunteers are allowed into the schools. So we've been trying to um, talk about ways that we could bring classes outside. We had a big Chalktoberfest um, last weekend where we had chalk artists and kids drawing chalk outside. Um, we've just been trying to see as much as we can do digitally so we can still support our artists and our kids. So hope, hopefully that helps, but we're still constantly thinking about it. Um, our next thing that I want to do is to do kind of like a, an outside concert, you know, um, again, so that we can get people outside. Do you have a giving requirement for your board members? Wow, that's a really good question. We don't. No. Um, we, of course, would love all of our board members to obviously be members of the BAAC, <laughs> and they are. <laughs> but that, but a yearly membership for a family membership is twenty five dollars, and then it you know increases. But whatever our board decides to give is great because here's how I see it: my board is giving their time and their talent and their effort, which is very very generous, <laughs> and it does not have to be monetarily for us. So anybody who's willing to give up all that does not does not even necessarily have to be a member of the BAAC. They don't even have to pay $25, um, but they do. But I just think that time and talent and effort is, is all that's required from the board. And so no, they do not. Um, our income comes from, our main income comes from, yes, grants and our membership and our fundraiser. And our fundraiser is an art auction each year. And again, we're not gonna we're not gonna do it this year. And I'm not gonna do an online art auction either because I just think that's a lot of work for not a lot of turnaround. We are just going to do a raffle, and we're going to try and do a um, sponsor a kid because right now our art auction usually generates us enough money to spend fifteen dollars on every kid in every school. And so we usually try and give like 50,000 some dollars back to the schools every year. So this year we're going to try and just put out an invitation that says, hey, do you want to support a kid? Maybe two, maybe a class and see if people will just um, do that instead of buying stuff at the art auction. Wish us luck. But yes, grants, definitely. Um, again, I want to say thank you so much for attending this. I really hope that I gave you any kind of insight or help. Um, and I hope that if you think of a question, e uh, two weeks, who doesn't matter, email me. We're all in this together and I would love to help and support any, any arts council in any town in our state. Um, arts are huge. And I know from being a mother of children and teaching all these years, there are kids in school only because they know they have art <laughs> or band. And if that's their passion, um, I'm here for it. But also I think kids learn so much more by incorporating arts into the lessons. And so we're huge into trying to do that at our schools. So I applaud all of you who are artists. I applaud all of you who are part of an arts council. And I just um, thank you again for, for coming and being part of this. Thank you so much, Sarah. That was so great to sit and listen to, even though I'm on the board. It, it just <laughs> constantly amazes me. Um, like Sarah said, thanks so much for everyone for coming. Um, Jasmine did drop the link. Thank you to uh, the SCED for tomorrow. Um, tomorrow we're going to have another great day of speakers and sessions and um, just some really cool topics on there. So make sure you check that out and add any uh, sessions that you're interested to to your sched so How thank awesome you guys. to the indiana arts council for making this free mm -hmm. this, that is amazing 
And so I'm doing sessions on my lunch hour and after school because that, that's, it's just great. So thank you to Indiana Arts Council for that. Yeah, thanks everyone and have a great evening. Bye everyone.